All right, we're still missing a couple people, but I'm going to start up anyway. As mentioned, today we are going to uh, we are going to go and we're going to write a to-do list activity. We're going to do it a little different. We're going to write a Kotlin program as opposed to a Java program. It's actually less code. And I sent you this article, amongst other things, to show you some of the differences between Kotlin and Java. I'm not going to go over any of it. We could spend quite a bit of time on it. Okay, but it does have uh, some listings. And there are many people who think that uh, that Kotlin is going to basically, it's going to, for lack of better words, kind of revive Java. All right, it'll actually help it because, again, Google is recommending that all new Android app development be done in Kotlin as opposed to Java. And the two can coexist without any problems. So they go in here and they tell you some of the advantages and disadvantages of Java, some of the advantages and disadvantages of using Kotlin. Then they have a syntax comparison. Again, I'm not gonna run through that stuff, all right? But it's it's about, I don't know, 15 or 20 pages long, but it is it is pretty well written, at least I thought it was, all right? So when you look on here, you know, the idea is it's got stuff that Java doesn't. And Java has very little other than checked exceptions that Kotlin doesn't have. All right. Plus it has things like null safety, classes are easier to create, etc. So I'll feel free to take a look at that. But what I decided to do with this is something that's kind of twofold, and that is what I want to do, let's see, I can find it on here. Let's see. One of the files that I saved for you or emailed to you, attached in the email to you. This is it. No. I wrote the same program twice. It's a very, very simple little program, but it shows you, there it is, some of the differences between writing a program in Kotlin versus writing a program in Java, all right? One thing hopefully you notice when you look on here, I think this is, I believe this is the Java, yeah, this is the Java one. So we're used to writing things like this where we come up, we set up our button, or buttons in this case. We um, put in our text views. We put in our ints, boom. Then we come in in the on create, and we sit there and we put our stuff in for find view by ID. Nothing new really there. But this isn't that bad of an example, but I'm sure with all of you, at one time or another, you've done stuff like this or stuff like this where you had to say the name of your control, dot set text, then in parentheses, you had to do an integer dot to string, et cetera. Well, the idea is this set text. I mean, why can't you just, if you've got a text view, why can't you just go and literally just use the text field from it directly, all right? And the thing is, when you use Kotlin, you can. So I'm going to see if I can stop the share on the one and start it on the other one. This isn't going to look that different, but what you'll notice when you look in here is now it's just dot text. Dot text. All right. There are things like that that just make it a little bit more intuitive and easier to use. What you will notice is when we start to write the program, if you want to create a new class, you no longer have to use new. You just don't have to use it anymore. All right. You can create a variable, and I'm just going to put this in there. Oh, see another thing? No semicolons. You can put them in, but you're actually discouraged from putting them in. All right. 
In many ways, this language has been optimized. Not only that, notice here, var. It doesn't say int count equals zero, it says var. When you use var, you are creating a variable whose value may change, but the system figures out the type of variable it is based on what comes on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So it infers, looking at this, it infers that count is an int. If I had done this and said var count equals 0, 0.0, it would infer that count was a double. If I do this, it infers that count is a string. All right. Now, let's just assume for a second that's not good enough for you. You want to make sure the system knows that the variable that you're creating is an int. You can still go in and do this. An int now is capital I-N-T. So you can do that. All right. So you can say var count colon and then the type. So I could do that or I could come in here and say double or I could come in here and say string, et cetera. Now that would fail right now because this has to be inside of double quotes. But hopefully at least just looking at that, you get the idea, all right? Another thing that Kotlin does is it, it allows you to go and put the word mutable on different things. Mutable means changeable. And what's nice about that is you can now create an array as a mutable array, which means that you can create an array that can grow and shrink as the program runs, which may not sound like that big a thing, but to me at least it is, and it's a good thing. All right, so there's things that you can do in here that you were not able to do earlier. All right, and they provide, it, it provides basically the same other kinds of support that Java does. All right, so why am why you know are we doing this? First of all, it's late in the semester. Why don't we just do this in Java? And the answer is we could, if we wanted to, we could do this in Java, all right, with, with really no problem. But I wanted to show you something here, and that is one of the things that I use a lot. Now, they've changed the website, unfortunately, but uh, I may or may not have mentioned this website to you earlier. I have no idea. But I go out a lot to raywenderlich.com, all right? Ray Wenderlich is the guy who owns this company, and he's got all sorts of stuff that's, that's uh, for Android, and he's got all sorts of stuff for iOS. And all I'd like you to do is just take a look in here. Programming in Kotlin, fundamentals. All right, published to the Google Play Store, Android and Kotlin. Beginning Android layouts, Android and Kotlin. Kotlin Flow, Android and Kotlin. Image co handling with Picasso, Android and Kotlin. Introduction to Google's material design, Android and Kotlin. Your second Kotlin Android app, etc. What you'll notice here is a, almost a total absence, in this case it is, of Android and Java. Because they, and at, at this company, they pushed everything to working with Kotlin. So I just decided, it's near the end of the semester. We'll go back and do a Java one for the database one next week, probably. But I just thought I would do this. So what I would like you all to please do is to start up a brand new application. We're just going to call it something like to-do list. All right. Save it where you normally save things. But two things. All right. First, when you save it, <clears throat> About halfway down, it asks you the language you're going to use. <clears throat> We've always just chosen the default, which is Java. Please choose, you know, click the drop down list and choose Kotlin. That's the first thing. Second thing is do not choose uh, an empty activity, choose a basic activity. All right. So I'm going to give you a second to do that. And then I'm going to bring up the completed project and product. So you can see pretty much what we'll be working with. Hopefully on the screen right now, you can, you can see it. And, and don't worry, I'm not going to go that fast. So if you're creating it, it's no problem. But this is what the, the finished product is going to look like. It'll say to-do list. All right. Here's our current to-do list. It only has three items on it. 
when we click the plus sign here, and yours won't look like a plus sign for right now. We're going to change that momentarily. But when you click on this, it allows you to add a new to-do list item. So if I come in here and I say, uh, wash the car, and then I have to deem whether or not it's important. If I say that it's important and I click save, it adds it to the list, all right? It, and it adds it to the list, and it's got three exclamation points by it, meaning that it's important, all right? What we'll also do by the end of class is if you click on any one of these, so I just washed the car. So I clicked on it, I click complete, and it's now off the list. Or I can come up here where I've got the ellipsis, the three dots, click there, and choose delete all, and it'll all be deleted. So that's how this is going to eventually work. I actually have my completed project up here. All right, rather than me doing a lot of typing, I'm just gonna put it up there for you. No, I'm not gonna just sit there and throw it out on GitHub, because I want you to type this stuff in. All right, so that's what we're going to end up doing today. All right, and along with that, just, just so you're aware of it, where is it now? Okay. I will have to change my share here again. This is going to be your next assignment. It's going to be to finish this app. But notice I'm doing this a little differently. I'm having, I'm grading it a little differently. All right. You're going to get all, almost all of the code today. All right. And I want, you know, you get 15 points for basically keying it in and having it work. Then I want you to come in and where we're going to go through the shared preferences stuff, I want you to add comments. And they should be good comments. All right. In other words, they should be comments that will help somebody taking a look at the program. And you'll notice that's worth half of the points for the app. Finally, the way the app works right now, the way that the app works right now is that if you click that ellipsis, as I showed you, it comes up and it says delete all. And if you do literally do that and you click delete all, it removes everything. Well, I want you to go and on your own, I gave you a really good URL for it. I want you to add what's called an alert dialog. And an alert dialog is Java's answer to the C Sharp message box. All right. And what I want is you to create a, an alert dialog. It's only about, I don't know, five to 10 lines of code, maybe a little more than that. It's no more, it's under 20 lines of code. I know that. All right. So I want you to add your own. And when you click on, on the delete all, I want you to come up and ask the user, are you sure you want to delete all to-do list items? And then there'll be a yes and a no under it. If they click yes, boom, do the deletion. If they click no, don't do anything. And if you don't like putting a no there, put cancel. You can do it either way. It's no big thing. But that's how this program is going to be graded. It's due a week from Friday, all right? So to-do list app, program works and incorporates the logic used in class, 15 points. Liberal use of comments, 25 points. Your own added alert dialogue, 10 points. Add that up, it's 50 points, all right? Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week will all be lab periods. I will start at the beginning of the period. I'll be online. If you don't want to get online, then don't get online. But I will be online at the beginning of each class, and I will just ask, are there any questions, anything that's not working, or whatever? And if there are, I'll try to handle those. All right, the rest of the period, then I'll just say, okay, you're on your own. I, I literally, and my wife will tell you this, I literally sit there or sit here, all right, I've got a little makeshift shift office in a corner of our bedroom with a folding table on it and, and a little bit of, of room where I can put papers. And I sit here, all right, other than to get up to, to get a, a water or something, I'm here 
until 425. All right. And then next week on Monday, as I'd already mentioned to you, we will quickly, fairly quickly, go over Unit 10, the Unit 10 material, which is on SQ Lite. We'll lecture. It'll probably about be about the same amount of time as yesterday, which was around 40 minutes, 35 minutes. And then Tuesday, we'll do this again, and it'll be set up pretty much the same way. And then two weeks from yesterday, which is the 27th, I plan on having the last lecture that I'll give, where I will show you how to take a completed app and upload it to the Google Play Store. All right, and then finally, as it mentions, all lectures will be taped. I like to set it up about this way. You may or may not know this, but when I've got 10 minutes left in a Zoom session, I don't know if that little box shows up on the screen or not, but it comes up and it says, basically it's like your 10 minute warning. Usually I go five to seven or eight minutes and then I stop, generate a new URL and start it all over again. But I've tried to set this up so that if, for example, if we do need three sessions to go through this today, we'll go from 12.35 till approximately 1.15. Then we'll take a nice 15 minute break and go from 1.30 till 2.10, all right? Take a 20 minute break and go from 2.30 until 3.10. Again, it will, those won't be exact times, but we'll do the best we possibly can, all right? If it only takes a couple of these sessions, fine. Then the rest will be lab. Finally, and I can't say this again to you too many times, now I have to start submitting reports, sometimes as many times as three times a week, and they wanna know who's not showing up for class, not a problem in here. They wanna know who's behind on assignments. A Couple of you are, so I put you in there. You're not gonna be called or anything else, especially with people who are going to graduate in May, they wanna make sure that you do graduate, all right? And uh, so they, they just want to know, and if it would turn out, and no one's that behind in here, but a couple of you are an assignment or two behind. All right. So I'm going to take for granted now that all of you have been able to come in, create, you open up Android Studio, create your new project, all right, and make it a Kotlin project again instead of a Java project. We called it To Do List all right, or something similar to that, all right, and uh, and we're just, we're going to get going, all right. We're going to get going as soon as I can find the window that has Android Studio opened up in it. All right. Come on. Oh my gosh, come on. My window right now, my windows that are available are not showing me my screen. Give me just a second. Sorry about this. This has not happened before. There's the emulator. Can you only see an emulator on your screen or can you see the code behind it? Only the emulator. All right. Okay. I'm going to close the emulator too then.
just trying to close a few things. So when the system sees that there's a lot of stuff open like this, for whatever reason, it's not allowing me to do very much. So. All right, I have almost nothing open right now. All right, now do you see my screen? Yes. All right, okay, all right then. So we created the new activity, et cetera. The first thing that we wanna do, or that I want you to do, is to go into your activity main <clears throat> .xml file that's in there, and I want you to go and remove the text view that's in there, and I want you to add a recycler view. Now, when you go in there, just so you're aware of this, right? This is gonna look a little bit funky. What do I mean? Technically, there's two files in here. The activity main is only gonna let you play with this, all right? The other one that you want will say something like content main. That's the one that'll have the text view in it. So find the content view file, remove the text view, then go and drag a recycler view out onto your content main. If that doesn't make sense, you'll have to ask. You may get errors with the uh, on your XML file, uh, you may get errors in the design view that says the stuff isn't uh, pinned to the side or whatever. You can do that if you want to. It's really not going to hurt much of anything if you don't do it one way or the other. All right. But I want there to be a recycler view. And then in here, this is what we're going to change next. On yours, it probably looks like an email or something like that, but it doesn't look like the plus sign. We're going to do that next. Again, I'm asking one last time. Is there anyone who could not put the recycler view in there? All right, then like I said, we're going to fix this next. There's different ways that you can do this, but I'm shooting to try to give you the, the ways that I think in here are the ones that make the most sense. All right, so what do I mean by that? I want you to come over here and I want you to go under your res drawable folder. So please go in under your res drawable folder. All right, and after you do that, right mouse click on the folder and choose new and go down about a third of the way and find vector asset. So right mouse click on your res layout folder, choose new and go down and find your vector asset. Again, it's about a third, between the third and a half the way down. Click on that and it'll come up and look like this. All right, yours may be dark, yours may be white. It really and truly does not matter. All right, you may have a little thing in here as well. You may have this same logo here and here and here it may be dark etc it doesn't matter but take your mouse if you would and click inside of this box mine's empty yours may or may not be you can click on it you may have to double click on it but i want you to where where it, it ends up looking like this again as i'm going through this if something doesn't make sense or hey mine ain't doing that then just let me know All right, we wanna go and find a plus sign that's in here. The easiest way is to go in and then there's a search bar up on top, type in the word add, and you'll see we have a plus sign right here. Again, I'm just gonna keep going unless someone stops me. So click on that plus sign and click okay. Yours might very well be black, and that's totally fine if it is. All right, so how do you fix that? Well, you can come right in here 
and you can click and bring that up and change it or manually go in, but we want this to be white. So you want to make sure that up here it's got F, 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 F. All right, and click choose, and then this should turn white. All right, after you've done all that, in here, yours probably still says black. I would change it to white. You don't have to do that, but you know, you're going to be adding something in here and it makes more sense to call it white because it is white in color. After you've done all that, click the next button and it should look like this. All it's saying is I'm about to add this to your drawables folder. All right, and that's fine. Just click finish. And then that should be all that you have to do. If it doesn't automatically close, if it doesn't automatically close, just close it yourselves, but it should close for you then. All right, it still hasn't changed this though. To change this, what you have to do, and unfortunately I did an update on my system it came back and it said I had a bunch of files that were out of date and it is now changed so that rather than me running 3.5, I'm now running 3.6. So my screen at least at times is going to look different than yours, just so you know that. But what I want you to do, and I've got to see if I can find it in here. I don't want that, I want the opposite of that. See right now it's not, you don't get the things down here that say, do you want to go back and forth between text and design? They're gone. You have to use the buttons that are up here, which seem to work when they feel like working and not work when they don't feel like working. But what I want you to do is to click on here, and then in your properties over here, you should have a property that's called, it should be near the top, that's called SRT Compat. SRT Compat, all right? If you find that property, and if you click the ellipsis at the side, that's what you have to do to, to change what you're working on, all right? Hopefully that'll open up something, and you should be able to go in and look at what opens up, and there should be a thing there that says project. And if you click on project, it should show you the plus sign that you just added. Now, I just went through a boatload of junk with you. If for some reason you're like, I listened to everything you said, none of that works, then just don't do it. All right? But I did go through the steps. So if for some reason you had any problems doing that, then just please go back and watch the tape later and see if you can do it on your own. I would never, ever take off for something like that. All right? just so you know. All right, my 10 minute thing has come up, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going, but I've got here, let's see. I've got 104, I'm gonna go for about six or seven more minutes. All right, then I'm gonna stop. Okay, now, what I'd like you to do next then, there's nothing special, nothing else in here special that you have to do. All right, in fact, we're gonna create two other activities and they're both really, really, really simple. Try to keep this as simple for you as possible. So if you would please go back to your main activity file, you may or may not have noticed, but your main activity file now is called mainactivity.kt for Kotlin and not mainactivity.java, all right? And what I want you to do, if you would, is find your on create that's right here. You'll also notice that it's not at override anymore. It's just override. And when you create a method, you use the word fun instead of function. All right, for now, I just want you to go in and remove the code that is under the fab.set on click listener. 
I want you to, that's, the code that I have is different than the code you have. I want you to remove that code. So please remove the current code that you have in your fab.setonclick listener. All right, so just as it's empty. So the next thing I want you to do then is I want you to come up to your package here, right mouse click on the name of your package, choose new, choose new Kotlin file class, not Java class, Kotlin file class. Make sure you choose class in here. And for the name in here, we're gonna call this create to do activity. Now I already have one, so I'm not going to hit enter. But again, right mouse click on here, right mouse click, choose add new, make sure you don't choose Java class, choose Kotlin file or class, it'll come up with file by default, change it to class, and type in create to do activity and hit enter. And that'll make a new activity for you, all right? This activity has got a little bit of code, about 20 lines, but it's no big thing. What I'm more concerned with is this. I want you to build it, because I have to stop and give you a new URL. All I want you to put in here is an edit text, and underneath that, a checkbox, and underneath that, a button. Now, I tried to keep this simple, all right, like I said, as simple as I possibly could. So put in an edit text, a checkbox, change the text to important, and a button. This is button save. This was, I think, checkbox important. I don't know if I just call this text view or text view message. I don't remember. All right, I might be able to come up and check it in here. So let's see. All right, I called... I call this title edit text, I don't know why. I call this important checkbox, and I call this save button, all right? Like I said, I'm gonna cut out like literally in about one minute. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna regenerate a, a new URL. It is just about 110, so we'll pick it up again at 115. All right, there will be a URL out there by 114, and I'll plan on starting up again at 115. So feel free to drop off. Come back again in five minutes, please.